Hey guys, in this instructional video, I'll give you a detailed look at the capabilities and characteristics of our speaking audible altimeter, Sono LT4V. Let's first take a look at some of the basics. On the right side of the altimeter, you'll find the speaker. This is generally the side that you want facing your ear on a skydive. For example, like this. If you have audible pockets on your helmet, make sure that the speaker is aligned over your ear as closely as possible. If the speaker is not aligned over your ear, it can be a lot harder to hear spoken notifications in freefall. You may have to experiment a bit on jumps, and you can also, if you want, switch the orientation of the speaker to see if that increases or lowers the volume on a jump. Certain types of helmets are definitely less ideal for this type of altimeter. The KISS helmet, for example, does not have audible pockets that generally line up well with the ear. It's always possible to use the alarms 1 through 3, though, which are the loudest sounds available on the altimeter and are similar to those produced by a standard audible. Sono LT4V has two buttons. On the top, you can see a settings button. The settings button can be used to both check as well as set the current preset you're using when you jump. If you press it once, holding it down for a moment, it will tell you what current preset Sono LT4V is set to. Press it again to change the preset, or continue to hold the button down to cycle through all five presets. The bottom button is the USB button, which is only used to set the altimeter or view its settings. When this button is pressed, the altimeter goes into web USB mode. This button must be held down for a few seconds before you hear the web USB chime. When you hear it, you can plug your altimeter into a computer with either the Chrome browser or the Edge browser open, and you will see a link appear. Make sure you have one of these open before you plug the altimeter in. Simply click the link to connect your altimeter or press the connect button at the top if it is not already linked and select your device. If you have issues here, there could be various reasons for it. Again, make sure you have the browser open before plugging it in, that the Sono LT4V web page app is not open, and that you have heard the USB chime. Only then do you plug the altimeter in, and then the link should pop up automatically. If it doesn't work, you might try another computer, as some computers have security settings or other software installed that could prevent the use of web USB. It's also possible to connect to an Android phone, although this can be a bit more finicky and the process is slightly different. On this phone, for example, in the Chrome browser, we can open the web page and the web app, in contrast to on the computer, press the USB button until we hear the chime, plug it in, and then click the connect button and select the device. It may be necessary to try this a couple times to connect the first time. Typically, it's a bit easier on a computer. Okay, once you get connected, you can then set the main settings and user presets on Sono LT4V. The address of the web app is freefalldatasystems.com slash sonolt underscore 4v underscore web underscore app. If you're not seeing your altimeter appear, it could also be that the cable you are using is not designed for data transfer. A data cable is included with each Sono LT4V. If you have problems, as mentioned, try a different computer or a different cable to try to diagnose the problem. Okay, let's take a look at two of the settings on Sono LT4V that cannot be changed, standard default setting and low speed default setting. The standard default setting has only regular announcements, meaning that the altimeter will read off your altitude every thousand feet, for example, and it has no additional notifications such as seat belts or break off or pull altitude. The standard default setting simply reads off the altitude every 2,000 feet or meters on ascent, and every 1,000 in freefall, and then every 500 under canopy. The freefall threshold is 80 miles per hour. Eight. The low speed default setting is conceived for wingsuiting or tracking suits, with a freefall threshold of 30 miles per hour. Announcements are made every 2,000 feet or meters on ascent, every 500 in freefall, meaning wingsuit flight or tracking suit flight as well as under canopy. Regardless of the preset used, speed is always indicated in feet per minute or meters per minute on ascent and in miles per hour or kilometers per hour in freefall and under canopy. Okay, let's take a more detailed look at the Sono LT4V web app. The main settings at the top of the app show the only three settings that apply to every single preset on the altimeter, including the default settings. You can switch on or off the pre and post jump briefs, or set the altimeter to metric mode. Below this, you'll see the first user preset and a series of questions which makes it easier to know exactly what you're setting. You can set a landing area offset, 
If you're 300 feet lower, for example, than your takeoff altitude, you can input 300 here and select the below radio button. Note that a landing zone offset is indicated only during the freefall and canopy descent and not during ascent in the aircraft. Below this, you see the ascent settings for preset one. Here you can choose to abbreviate the readings, indicate how often announcements should be made, choose what to announce, and in what range these regular announcements should take place. You can then set the volume for this specific phase, the skydive. It's then possible to enter additional notifications for ascent. There's a special notification called altitude at the top that can be used to insert an altitude reading at any point. Note that these have to be in multiples of 100 feet or meters. So 5,100 feet would be allowed, but not 5,150. To delete a notification, click the X next to the notification. A whole list of the possible sounds for each phase of the skydive can be found at this web page. We've created a separate instructional video for how to add user sounds titled Sono LT 4V Custom User Sounds. If you want the loudest sound possible for freefall, alarms 1, 2, and 3 are the only non-spoken notifications. This is useful for helmets where there's a lot of wind noise or where the audible pocket does not line up well with your ear. Under freefall settings, you can change your freefall threshold. For wingsuiting, we recommend starting with a value of about 40 miles per hour and working your way down from there depending on the size of your wingsuit. Swoopers may want to actually increase this value to something like 100 miles per hour to avoid hearing free fall notifications and announcements under canopy. The same series of questions asked for ascent then follows for free fall and then for canopy as well. After this, follow presets two and three. When finished setting the altimeter, you can simply unplug it from the computer and close out your web app window. You should hear the altimeter chime out. As mentioned, it's the top button used to set the altimeter and the desired setting should be selected after using the web USB app. The altimeter actually comes preloaded with three user presets with the same settings as the standard default setting, but with the addition of several notifications. All three give seatbelt indications at 1,500 feet on ascent. Preset one has a breakoff notification at 6,000 feet, as well as a pull notification at 4,500 feet. In a similar fashion, user preset two has a breakoff notification at 5,500 feet and a pull notification at 4,000 feet. Finally, user preset three has a breakoff notification at 5,000 feet and a pull notification at 3,500 feet. Okay, let's take a look at the altimeter itself again. Let's go back to the buttons as there's one more thing the buttons can do. Hold down both buttons for a moment and you'll hear the battery life of the altimeter. <laughs> They have to be pressed at pretty much exactly the same time. If you continue holding the buttons down past the battery reading, you'll hear information on the last jump. Exit altitude, open altitude, meaning the altitude at which the canopy was fully open, freefall time, and canopy time. This can be useful for logging purposes. Note, however, that this information is lost when the altimeter runs out of battery, is set with the WebUSB app, the firmware is updated or shared. If you hold down the buttons past this, it will read off the current firmware number. If you keep holding it down further, you'll enter sleep mode. sleep mode. To wake up from sleep mode, simply press the settings button until you hear your desired setting. Standard default setting. To update the firmware, take the following steps. First, plug your altimeter into the computer using a data USB cable. Very important that it's a data cable. Double tap the reset button using a paper clip in the small hole adjacent the speaker. A quick double tap is necessary to reveal the altimeter on your desktop as a drive called SunOLT 4V. Then drag the latest firmware file from the website onto the altimeter. Note that you'll lose your settings or anything you did with the WebUSB app when updating your firmware, so you'll have to redo your settings. Okay, in terms of sharing your settings with another jumper, the process is almost exactly the same. First, plug the altimeter whose presets you want to duplicate into the computer using a data USB cable. Then, double tap the reset button. You should see a drive called sunolt 4 v Click on that drive and save the file called current.uf2 to a location on your computer. Then take another sunolt 4 v and carry out the same process but this time copy over the current.uf2 file on its drive with the file from the other altimeter. The presets for SunOLT4V are stored in the firmware itself. 
If the altimeter doesn't seem to be working, try pressing the settings button to see if you can get it to respond. If that doesn't work, try pressing the reset button with a paperclip a single time and waiting several seconds. If the altimeter isn't charged, put it on a charger for a few hours to charge it up. It generally takes about three hours when empty. When the altimeter's finished charging, the red light should go off. Sono LT4V's battery can last up to eight weeks and it's recommended to charge the altimeter once it reaches 10%. It's also recommended, though not required, to keep the altimeter charged during long layoffs from use to preserve its capacity. One common question we get asked is if users can add their own sounds to Sono LT4V, and the answer is yes. We've actually produced a separate instructional video linked in the description of this video describing that process. There's a specific format and way this needs to be done, and it's really only for advanced users. Okay, other than what's been discussed here, if you have any other questions about Sono LT4V, feel free to contact us or ask in our forum at freefalldatasystems.com forum. As always, we hope this altimeter brings you a lot of altitude awareness. Have fun and stay safe up there.